Welcome back to a new chapter in which we are going to discuss parallelism and concurrency in Scala and on the JVM. I'm Daniel and in this lesson we'll set up some common background regarding the JVM concurrency model. So let's see what this is all about. Alright, so we're back in our IDE and since this is the start of a new chapter, let's create a new package here under the lectures package. So right click and create a new package for me. So right click, create a new package and let's name this part three concurrency. All right, so let's create a Scala app here in this newly created part three concurrency package by right clicking new Scala class and let's just call this intro. Make this an object and uh, of course make this extend app. Now, a little disclaimer uh, before I continue so that you don't hate me. In the next couple of lessons, I'm going to make extensive use of VARs. Not that I like them, but I just want to prove the ideas within these videos because most of them involve concurrent reading or writing to the same shared memory zone. All right, so don't get mad at me. Now, uh, this lesson and the next where we talk about thread communication will focus on the creation, manipulation and communication of JVM threads. All right, so if you're a super Java veteran and know all about JVM threads, you can probably safely skip these lessons, but I would recommend that you go through them, even for a good refresher, because there are also some Scala specific things that you will miss. For example, the synchronized methods and volatile annotations, all right? Cool, so let's start. Now, one of the critical pieces of parallel programming on the JVM is called a thread. And a thread, much like almost anything else on the JVM, is the instance of a class. So I can simply call, uh, simply say a thread equals new thread. So this is the Java class. This is natively implemented on the JVM. And the thread constructor takes an instance of a trait called runnable as a Java interface. So normally on the JVM, so in uh, the package Java Lang, there is a an interface called runnable and it has a method called run which doesn't take any parameters. Now we'll, we're going to treat these interfaces as traits in Scala as you are well known by now. So instantiating a thread will need to receive an instance of a runnable. Now if I follow the uh, suggestion of the ID and I click or I enter, then the IDE will autocomplete a runnable instantiation for me as an anonymous class. So if I implement the, this method run as say print line running in parallel, then this little piece of code instantiates a thread object with a runnable object whose method run prints something in parallel. Now, how do you run something in parallel? Well, you say a thread dot start. Starting a thread will actually create a JVM thread, which runs on top of an operating system thread. So if I right click and run this, this will say running in parallel, but it will get executed on top of a separate JVM thread than the thread that actually evaluates every single piece of this code. Now, I'm not going to stress too much about what operating system threads are or about how computers actually run things in parallel. I'm assuming these things as already known. My goal here is to have you acquainted with the JVM way of executing things in parallel. Now, starting an, a thread that is calling the thread method on a thread instance gives the signal to the JVM to start an actual JVM thread which runs on top of an OS thread. So this only gives the signal to the JVM to start a JVM thread which runs on top of an OS thread. Then the JVM makes that JVM thread invoke the run method inside its inner runnable. I also want you to make a very clear distinction in your head between a thread instance, which is an object that we operate on, that is we call methods on it, and JVM threads, which are the actual place where the parallel code is supposed to run. All right, so have this very clear in your head. 
At the same time, let's address a common misconception. If you want to execute some code in parallel, you need to call the start method on a thread instance, not the run method on the runnable. So if, for example, I extract this little thing into a val called runnable equals this guy, and instantiate a thread with that runnable, if you want to execute this code in parallel, you call the start method on the thread, not the run method on the runnable. Because this guy just calls up the plain run method on a plain runnable object. So this doesn't do anything in parallel. So that was a quick two minute rundown of the common pitfalls. Now let's continue with joining a thread. So if you call a thread dot join, then this call will block until the thread has finished running. So blocks until a thread finishes running. This is how you make sure that a thread has already run before you continue some computation. Cool, so that's threads 101 on the JVM. All right, so JVM threads have been designed to run in parallel, but watch what I'm about to write. Let's say if I declare a little value called thread hello, which creates a new thread, which uh, receives a runnable, and I'm going to use the abstract method call, I can reduce a runnable to a lambda, and let's just say I have, um, I print five times, so one to five for each, I just print line hello. All right, so I print this five times. And let's create a similar thread which uh, says goodbye in a very symmetrical fashion. Which one to five for each print line goodbye. And let's start these two threads. So if I say thread hello start and uh, thread goodbye start and watch what happens. Compiling. So you see goodbye, hello, goodbye, hello, goodbye, hello, goodbye, hello. But why is that? We started the thread hello first and thread goodbye next. If I run this again, we see goodbye and hello in different orders. So what does that tell us? That Different runs with a multi-threaded environment produce different results. Although I'm sure you knew that already. So different runs produce different results. As I'm sure you're aware, thread scheduling depends on a number of factors, including the operating system and the JVM implementation. So we are going to address the problem of making threads act in a predictable way very shortly in this lesson. Before that, let's talk about executors. Now, if you've developed for the JVM before, you know that threads are really expensive to start and kill. And the solution is to reuse them. And the Java standard library offers a nice standard API to reuse threads with executors and thread pools. And the way that we do that is to create a pool, which is uh, written as executors dot new fixed thread pool and you can pass in the number of threads that you want to reuse, like 10. And I'm going to Alt-Enter here to import executors. Executors is a part of the Java Util concurrent package. All right, so this is a Java library. Now, once I created this pool, I can then say pool.execute, and then I can pass in a runnable. And I'm passing in a lambda by using the abstract met method pattern and just print line something in the thread pool. So this runnable will get executed by one of the 10 threads managed by this thread pool. I have 10 threads at my disposal max to execute my actions and the executor manages which thread executes which. But I don't really need to care about starting and stopping threads, which is really cool. So let's do a small test and see these in action. So if I say pool.execute and uh, I'm passing in a lambda which 
uh, tries to sleep for a second, and we sleep with thread.sleep, and pass in 1000 milliseconds, and then print line, let's say done after one second, and then I do pull.execute some other runnable that sleeps for two seconds. So let's say sleep for 1000 and then print line, let's say almost done. And then do this again and say done after two seconds. Then in a serial uh, implementation, these things will be executed sequentially. So uh, sleep done after one second, sleep almost done, sleep done after two seconds. But since I've uh, delegated these two actions to the, the thread pool, I should be waiting only two seconds. And these two things should be printed at roughly the same time. So if I run this, let's see this in action. So done after one second, done after two seconds. But the done after one second and almost done would print it almost at the same time, which is proof that these two actions were executing at the same time. Now, thread pools have really nice APIs. So say, for example, that I want to shut down the pool, the thread pool, that is shut down all the threads, I can simply call pool.shutdown. Shutting down means that no more actions can be submitted. So if I write pool.execute and then I pass in something like print line should not appear then this guy will throw an exception because the pool does not accept any more actions so if I run this again as you see this thing does not receive any more actions now, the reason you still see these things printed is because the pool did accept the previous two runnables. And when I tried to execute a new runnable after shutting it down, it threw an exception in the main thread. So this throws an exception in the calling thread. All right, so let's comment these out so that they don't crash our program. Okay. And uh, I'm going to show you pool.shutdown now, which is a different call than shutdown in that it interrupts the sleeping threads that are currently running under the pool. So if they're sleeping, they will throw exceptions. So uh, if I call pool shutdown now in the main thread, while these two actions are executing, both of them are going to throw exceptions. So let me run this just so I can prove my point. And as you see, we have some exceptions thrown and nothing printed. So these guys aren't printed out. We see here sleep interrupted. That is because the manager here, the pool, just interrupted the running threads. So let's comment this one out. Now, if I uncomment pool shutdown and then I print line pool dot is shutdown, this is an accessor that will return true at this point because I called the shutdown method. This will return true even if the actions here submitted to the pool are still running. So if I I'll right click and run this, I'm going to see true here before the actions are actually getting executed. So as you see, these guys are executed even though the pool was theoretically shut down. Shut down means that the pool does not accept any more actions. All right, so we talked about threads and how to manage them with executors. Now, fixed thread pool here that uh, we've used is just one option. Executors has a number of potential thread pools, like cache thread pools, fixed thread pools, scheduled thread pools, single threads, and so many other options. Now, what I want to discuss is concurrency problems in multi-threaded environments on the JVM, which I'm going to do in the very next video.